Hey, restaurant owners, let's go ahead and increase your profits. And we're going to do that by talking a little bit about your draft beer system. Sound good? Catch you on the other side. Hey everybody, Ryan Gromfin, author, speaker, chef, restaurateur, founder of therestaurantboss.com, as well as clickbacon.com. And that's right, today, four ways to increase profit in draft beer sales. So, four ways. Are there five, are there six, are there seven? Sure, I'm sharing with you four, the easiest four. Here you go, you ready? Step number one, make sure your beer is being served in a clean glass. Obvious, right? There's different definitions of clean. There's clean and then there's beer clean. Beer clean is really, really clean. Now, you might need to get your chemical people involved in this. One, have them come out and test your system. Make sure that your TDS, total dissolved solids, is very low. I don't know how low, but very, very, very low. Call them out. They'll take care of it. A lot of times, just depending on maybe you have one restaurant set up in a way and you're using chemicals and filters and everything comes out perfect, Another restaurant that you operate a couple miles away might be on a different water system. The same chemicals may not work well there. So have your chemical guys come out and test your TDS, total dissolved solids. Then make sure that your after rinse, whatever you're using to rinse your glassware is actually getting your glasses clean. I don't just mean clean, I mean beer clean. Now again, not gonna get too far into the weeds on this. I'm not the specialist in this. I just wanna make sure you're serving a beer clean glass. That is a really, really clean glass. We're gonna put a picture up here, hopefully you're looking at it now, but you can see the difference between beer that's served in a clean glass and beer that is served in a almost clean glass. You'll see that the head usually falls really flat, so you don't get the great presentation that you want. Then that brings us to step number two, which is make sure that we're serving a good head on your beer. The head is really important. A 16 ounce glass shouldn't have 16 ounces of beer in it. What is foam? Foam is beer. Foam makes beer taste good. It protects the beer, it keeps it cold, it lets your customer know that it's fresh and serving a good head on a beer is totally awesome and acceptable. You don't have to be the bar that pours off the head to get that perfectly flat top. Maybe you do operate that bar. If you do, I would still challenge you on this, but most of you don't operate that bar. Serve me a head on my beer. It looks great. It protects the beer. Also, your 16 ounce glass of beer, you're only putting about 14, 14 and a half ounces in that now. So one, beer clean glass. Two, a good head. Three, put a CO2 gauge on every line. Yes, on every line. You may have one CO2 gauge for all five or all six of your lines. And, you know, it works. But here's the reality. All different styles of beers, especially craft beers, need to get dispensed at different pressures of CO2. There are apps that you can download that will tell you based on the temperature of your fridge and what type of beer, how much pressure you should put in there. You can talk to your beer reps and your beer distributors, but honestly, all you have to do is look at the beer that's coming out. You put a gauge on each line, have them set them where they think they should be, and then depending, if you're getting too much foam, it's too high. If you're not getting enough foam, it's too low. It's really that simple, but you absolutely, absolutely need a CO2 pressure gauge on every line so you can adjust them differently. Okay, that brings us to step number four. This is the hardest one. Now, we have to measure how much beer we're actually selling versus how much beer our computer says we're selling, like how much beer we're dispensing, I should say, how much beer we're dispensing versus how much beer we're selling. There's only two good ways to do this, and one of them's expensive, one of them's difficult. The more difficult one is to get a keg scale. So last week I talked about counting your bottle beers. Well, it's the same idea for draft beer, but we can't count kegs, we have to weigh them. So you can get a keg scale. They're like a hundred bucks, couple hundred bucks. They're like a floor scale. You pick up your keg, put it on there. You weigh how much your, your keg weighs minus the weight of the actual keg. That's how you know how many ounces of beer are in there and then you run a report to see how much beer you sold, and then you convert that to ounces, and then you can figure out if the beer that you've dispensed is equal to the beer that you've sold. If not, then there's some form of theft, there's some form of over foaming, they're pouring it out, they're not doing it properly, but you can discover the difference. The other way is more expensive, and there's companies that do this now, but you can put flow meters on every one of your lines, and literally, 
every time beer is dispensed, it will, it will register into a computer. It'll say you've dispensed one ounce, two ounces, three ounces, you know, a hundred ounces, 200 ounces of beer from each one. And then you can compare that to what your computer says for sales. There are companies like Bev Intel that will come out and actually set the system up for you. And they've got the software to measure it for you. The point is at least do the first three steps, count your bottle beer like we talked about. If you can get to a point with step four where you're weighing your kegs or measuring the dispensing amount, if you are a high volume draft beer house, you have to be doing this stuff. It will make a huge difference. But even if you're not, there's no reason why you can't do at least step one, two, and three and improve the quality of the product that you're putting out and increase your profits doing it. I hope you enjoyed this week's tip. My name is Ryan Gronfin and I look forward to bringing you another one just like this next week. Have a wonderful day. I wanna thank you for watching that video. If you can do me three really quick favors right now, very quick. The first is if you haven't already, will you subscribe to this channel? In a moment, some things are gonna pop up on your screen, some buttons, and one of those buttons is gonna be subscribe. So whether you're watching this on my channel or on YouTube or on your phone, just stick around for one second and you're gonna see a big subscribe button. If you haven't already, could you please subscribe? Two. If you haven't liked this video, will you go ahead and click the like button? Actually, don't just click it. Will you smash that like button and tell the world that you really enjoy this? Because the way that I can continue to bring you all this great free training is for my message to expand for more restaurant owners and future restaurant owners around the world to be watching this. And so the way to do that is to like my video. So again, if you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a place for you to like it. Or if you're back on my website, there'll be a place for you to like that. So smash that like button for me. And then also, could you leave a comment? Ask me a question. I reply to all my comments as fast as I can, usually within about 24 hours. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but go ahead and ask me a question. Leave me a comment. Tell me you love the video. Tell me you'd like to see something else in a video. If you need more detail on a certain area, I can film other videos about that. But if you can go ahead in a couple seconds now, it's going to come out. If you can subscribe, like, and comment, that would be great. Also, there'll be a spot in the in this little button coming out in a few seconds where you can download something for free. I'm always rotating that. So take a look at that, some free tools. But if you're new to my channel, if you've never seen my videos before, there'll also be a spot for you to watch a video that'll kind of introduce you to what I do here at the Restaurant Boss and at clickbacon.com and tell you about what we do and how you can get more involved and how you can get more free stuff and all that. So the button should be coming in by now. Go ahead and click on those and have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you so much.